Chapter 8 Kelly had been getting into a routine. It didn't make sense for her to see the boys to school since Dylan could drop them off and pick them up on way to and from work, so she waved goodbye to them at the home and happily chatted with them when they returned. Maria was the one who grocery shopped and cleaned. Kelly put down her foot at cooking. She needed something to do and so expanded the weekly grocery list and took over the cooking. She filled her evening hours with the kids, doing homework, playing games, being a general nuisance to them as she learned more about Caden and Avery. Yet, during the school day itself, she was bored. Two weeks into her marriage, and she had cabin fever. Anne, Michael's wife, called Kelly. She wanted Kelly's professional opinion about something, and Kelly jumped at the chance to get out of the house. Kelly reflected that she was probably the only nurse Anne knew. However, Kelly was glad to help Anne out. She had enjoyed being Michael's nurse at the hospital after he had surgery years before. She also envied the couple a little for the love that they had. Thank you for coming, Anne let Kelly in. I'm sorry for making you come out all this way. It's fine, I'm happy to help. Kelly looked at the house. Your home is beautiful. Thank you. Anne gave a half-hearted smile. Michael's picking Amy up from daycare, so we will have a little time alone. Kelly looked more closely at Anne. She seemed exhausted. There were dark circles under her eyes. Want to tell me what's going on? Anne motioned her to the kitchen. Tea? Coffee? Coffee. Kelly removed her winter wear and followed Anne as she set up the coffee maker. Kelly hopped on one of the breakfast bar stools, waiting patiently. I don't know why I called you, really. Anne had a little laugh. I just thought, since you're a nurse, you could give me your opinion on whether this was important enough to see the doctor about. Actually, Michael suggested it. Okay. Kelly prompted with a friendly smile. I'm all ears. For the past year, we have been trying IVF. Anne leaned against the counter. We were hoping to give Amy a sibling, but it hasn't been working out. The first one didn't take. We had a heartbeat with the second treatment, but it disappeared. Kelly watched Anne struggle for composure. She waited rather than offer sympathy. Anne wanted to talk, not cry right now, so she would respect that. Anne took a deep breath. The third treatment didn't seem to take either. I had my monthly afterwards, so I know it didn't work. I didn't bother to go back to the doctor's office. We just phoned it in. Michael and I agreed that this was the last treatment since I found it so difficult after the second time. Only now I'm feeling horrible. Really horrible physically, and I don't know why. What are your symptoms? Kelly asked gently. I'm tired all the time. My lower back hurts. I feel like I have a brick in my stomach. I'm bloated up like a balloon, so nothing fits, Anne complained. I want to cry at everything. Yesterday I was making casserole and burst into tears. It's ridiculous, and I'm scaring Michael. At first I thought it has to be a type of withdrawal from all the hormones I was on, but it just keeps getting worse. Have you had your monthly since? Kelly questioned. No, Anne flushed. She sighed. I think I'm having the change. You mean menopause? Kelly looked at her. How old are you? Forty-five, she replied. She grabbed mugs and poured out coffee, handing one to Kelly. It's possible, Kelly allowed as she stirred sugar into her coffee. She frowned as she watched Anne heap in sugar and cream. Did you always take that much sugar and cream? Huh? Anne looked down at her coffee in surprise. No, I just really crave sweet things lately. I've gained weight, too, which I don't understand because I'm throwing up all the time. I can't keep anything heavy down. Anne, how did you feel when you were pregnant with Amy? Kelly asked. She had a small suspicion. Great. Anne smiled at the memory. It was wonderful. I knew right away before the tests came back. I had all this energy. It was the best pregnancy ever. How long have you been feeling this way? Kelly inquired. A little over two months now? Anne wiped away a tear. I don't want it to be the change. I don't want to be that old yet. I know it's useless to fight against it, and it will come whenever it does. I just feel embarrassed. That's why I haven't gone to the doctor. Kelly nodded in sympathy. A lot of women felt that way. It could be the change. It could be a couple of other things which would require you to go to the doctor to find out. However, I 
think it's probably something else. What? Should I be worried? Anne questioned nervously. Kelly shook her head. I think you should get a pregnancy kit. I still have one in the washroom for when we were trying. Anne was confused. I can't be pregnant. Why not? Kelly tilted her head. You've just described a number of pregnancy symptoms. But we can't. That's why we were doing IVF. After Amy, nothing was happening, Anne explained. Plus, I feel awful. Not every pregnancy is the same, Kelly advised. Some women feel awful the entire time, some just for the first trimester. Some feel wonderful like you did with Amy. Were you doing IVF to conceive Amy? No, she was our miracle baby. A girl when the Ramsleys tend to have boys. Anne shook her head. But I had my period after the last IVF. Kelly smiled. The hormones were still in your system. I'm guessing you may have conceived directly after that period. You could be about six weeks along. And many women experience stronger symptoms of pregnancy if they are carrying multiples, which is a possibility since you are taking fertility treatments. Twins? Anne blinked and wiped away another set of tears. Really? It's only a possibility, Kelly cautioned. You need to pee on that stick, and then we'll be able to rule it out or confirm it. You will need to go to the doctor either way. If you are not pregnant, it could be a cyst, or that you are starting menopause. If it is the change, there are ways to alleviate those symptoms and make you feel more comfortable. However, pregnancy is my guess. Don't I have to wait until morning? Anne touched her abdomen gently. Nope. You're probably far enough along that it should be able to detect the right hormones, Kelly said. What if I'm not? Anne asked softly. You won't know until you take the test, Kelly reasoned. If it's negative, we will eat all the ice cream in the freezer and watch whatever movie you'd like to cry over. I have all afternoon since Dylan's picking up the boys. Boys? I thought you just had Bentley. Anne frowned. Who is Dylan? Oh, Kelly flushed guiltily. I guess I haven't said anything yet. Don't worry, I promise your invitation is coming. Invitation? Anne raised an eyebrow. Have you met someone? It's sort of complicated. Kelly raised her left hand. We are going to have a celebration, though, so everyone can come and celebrate? Anne gasped and grabbed her hand, looking at the gold band. You got married? Yup, Kelly tried to smile. Where's the engagement ring? Anne frowned. Who is he? You said boys. Does he have kids? He has two boys. It was pretty much a non-existent engagement, since it was a sudden marriage, and he's really wonderful, Kelly answered. He was really wonderful. He just didn't want her. Who is he? Anne asked. You said his name was Dylan? Dylan Ramsley, Kelly whispered and tried to judge Anne's reaction. She looked a little shocked. Dylan Ramsley? Michael's cousin? Kelly nodded. The one they said would never get married again, Anne said. Ouch, Kelly winced. I'm sorry. Anne immediately apologized. I shouldn't have said that. I am so sorry. It's just... He's been so caught up about his wife and daughter's death that no one thought he would. Surprise! Kelly gave a half-smile, half-grimace. Dylan doesn't do things without thinking them through, Anne stated firmly. Michael and I didn't even know that you two were dating. We didn't, Kelly said honestly. You didn't date? You just got married? Anne was more confused than ever. Kelly sighed and then told Anne everything. Meeting Dylan at Livingston Academy, the camping trip, the custody battle, and how they had ended up married for Bentley's sake. By the time she was finished, she felt miserable. Now we're married. We haven't talked about what we're going to do after the custody hearings are over. I'm hoping he won't want a divorce. I don't want to divorce him. It's silly because I don't really know him, but I like him so much. Anne reached out and took Kelly's hand in sympathy. What are you going to do? Kelly wiped away a stray tear. I don't know. Hopefully I can make him happy enough in the meanwhile that he will see the advantages of staying married to me. I will help however I can, Anne said firmly. We are friends, and now you are family. Thanks, but I'll be fine, Kelly put on a brave smile. Now, enough about me. Go pee on a stick and put us out of our suspense. While you do that, I'm going to explore this beautiful home you have. Anne nodded and headed to the washroom. 
Kelly finished her coffee and began exploring the house. It really was exquisite. Right on the beach and very large. She smiled over Amy's room, decorated so girly. Kelly enjoyed looking at the beach and the surf for a moment. She wandered into a study. It was impressive with all the books lining the shelves. A piece of paper caught her eye. It was wedged between two of the shelves near the base. It looked like it might have fallen out of a stack of papers when somebody was moving them, and it accidentally ended up there without anyone noticing. Kelly bent down and gently worked it out. It took a bit, because the paper clip kept getting stuck. Finally, she had it. There were three papers and a picture attached via the paper clip. The photo was of a boy, perhaps the same age as Caden. He looked so very much like Michael. Kelly looked at the papers. Dear Michael, I would like to thank you for the monthly payments you make for Daniel's support. He was able to go on that ski trip with his friends. Danny's doing excellent in school with all A's, as you can see by the attached report card. He's been doing classes ahead of his year with wonderful results. Kelly dropped the papers as Anne came into the room. I can't look. Anne swallowed and pressed a hand to her abdomen. I left it in the bathroom. Please, can you tell me what it says? Sure. Kelly scooped up the papers. She tried to go past Anne, however, she held out a hand and stopped her. What is that? Anne asked curiously. Nothing. Kelly knew she was an awful liar. Guilt was written all over her face. Kelly? She closed her eyes and sighed. Kelly knew Anne would have to be told. There was no way that Kelly could hide this from her. She just wished she hadn't been the one to let Anne know. I just found them. It looks like they had been accidentally dropped between two of the shelves. Anne gently pried the paper from Kelly's fingertips. She opened them up and began to scan the letter. Maybe it was cowardly, but Kelly went to check on the pregnancy kit. The stick showed the results and Kelly felt some trepidation. This might not be a good time for such news, especially when it looked like Michael had a son from an affair a while ago. She wondered if Anne knew. Kelly doubted it from the way Anne had been reading the letter. Reluctantly, Kelly exited the washroom and approached Anne, who was still reading the letter. Anne seemed remarkably calm as she looked up from the papers to Kelly. What does it say? Congratulations? Kelly pasted on a sickly smile. You're pregnant. Anne burst into tears and crumpled to the floor, holding the letter. Oh, boy. Kelly quickly sat down and hugged Anne, who cried on her. He never told me, she wailed, all this time, and I never knew he had a son. No wonder he wasn't worried about continuing IVF. Here I am, stupid me, wanting to give him a son, a boy for his own, and he had one already. Maybe there's some mistake, Kelly suggested hopefully, even as she thought it was unlikely. No, Anne grabbed Kelly harder. He's been supporting this kid for years. I didn't realize it because the money goes to some small-town furniture store. I handle our finances since Michael is no longer able to. I always thought he was paying off a piece of custom furniture, but it's right there on the letterhead. Danny's mother owns or works at the store, and the money is for his son. Anne sobbed uncontrolled on Kelly. Wondering if she should, Kelly grabbed her phone and quickly snapchatted a picture of them to Michael. He needed to come home and explain to fix things with Anne. Kelly rubbed Anne's back. It was obvious that the affair had taken place before Anne's marriage to Michael, but still he should have told her. It didn't take long for Michael and Amy to come home. He looked worried and confused by Anne's reaction until Kelly handed him the papers that she had found. He grimaced at the photo of Danny and went to his safe, putting in the numbers by memory. Michael grabbed out a large envelope sat down on the floor with them and searched the contents before pulling out a sheaf of papers and thrusting them at Kelly. What are all these? Kelly had copies from at least a dozen birth certificates in her hands. She sorted through them. What am I looking for? Anne lifted her head and wiped her eyes, staring at the papers. David Michael Ramsley, Jana Colburn Ramsley, Andrew Colburn Ramsley... Hey, that was the guy from the hospital, Kelly interrupted. He looked just like Max. Michael pointed lower on the birth certificate. Date of birth? Anne questioned. 
Michael shook his head in the negative and made some gestures with his hands. Daddy, Amy piped up, interpreting her father's gestures as she watched the adults. He means daddy. Kelly looked at the father's name written on the sheets of paper. They all say David Michael Ramsley. What? Anne grabbed some of the sheets looking for herself. Daniel David Wells Ramsley, Father David Michael Ramsley, Mother Sarah Donna Wells. Who is David Michael Ramsley? Kelly asked. Michael's father. Anne looked at her husband for the first time since his arrival. She shook her head in amazement. Michael, these are all your half-siblings? He nodded grimly. He wasn't particularly proud of the fact. Wow, Kelly said in surprise. Your dad really got around. Michael scowled and nodded again. So he's not... Danny isn't yours, Anne asked in a guilty yet hopeful manner. Michael shook his head vehemently no. He motioned in their sort of sign language that he would have told her. Anne burst into happy tears and hugged him. Michael rolled his eyes, but he kissed Anne's temple and held on to her. "'I have a question,' Amy returned. Kelly was surprised that none of them had noticed the four-year-old leave the room and return. "'What's your question, honey?' Kelly asked. She thought how their daughter was absolutely adorable and felt a yearning for one of her own. Maybe in a couple of years from now, if she and Dylan were still together, she could convince him to expand their small family." Kelly really hoped that might happen. "'What's this?' Amy held up the pregnancy stick in her little hand. "'That is to tell if your mommy is going to have a baby,' Kelly grinned. "'She has to get it confirmed by the doctor, but it looks like you're going to have a baby brother or sister.' "'When? Will Santa put him under the tree at Christmas?' Amy excitedly asked in her high little voice. Kelly laughed. "'Not exactly.' She looked at Anne and Michael, who were totally ignoring them as the pair happily soaked in the news. Michael gave Anne a questioning look. She nodded with a smile, and he held her even closer. Kelly rolled her eyes. "'Why don't you show me your room, Amy? I'll explain a little about what you have to look forward to.' "'Okay.' Amy grabbed Kelly's hand, pulling her along. She wrinkled her nose. "'They're weird sometimes.' Kelly laughed again. "'Yes, they are. However, they both love you very much.' I know, Amy said confidently. I love them, too. Want to see my horsey collection? Wow, how did you know I love horsies? Kelly asked. She kept up the chatter with Amy so that Michael and Anne could have so much needed time together. How did it go with Anne? Dylan asked as he sorted through some mail. Really well, Kelly set the table. Part of her plan to get Dylan to want her to stay was to give home-cooked meals every night. She knew Maria used to make from frozen meals that Dylan had just had to heat up, but Kelly hoped that he would enjoy her cooking more. I was thinking that maybe the way to go would be to freelance on my nursing skills. There are lots of women who might want to talk to a nurse privately. Go into business for yourself? Dylan said absently, frowning over a paper. Yes, Kelly nodded. I could charge decently and work less hours, which means I would see Bentley more. You know you don't have to work, right? Dylan asked. There's no reason for you to have a job unless you want one. I have just never not worked. Kelly shrugged as she put down utensils. I'm not sure what to do with my time. I'm just saying you don't have to do it for the money, Dylan stated. If you want to start a business or go back to school or just sit around in your pajamas, it's okay. Kelly laughed. I am not going to sit in my pajamas all day. What would your housekeeper say? I'm not sure, Dylan smiled. Whatever you want to do, I will support you. If you need any help, just let me know. I think I will do some research now to see if it's even possible, Kelly said. Otherwise, I will start baking again and end up gaining pounds. Baking? Dylan looked at her hopefully. Maria isn't a great baker. I used to bake a lot until I was working all the time. Kelly smiled. Didn't everyone say that the way to a man's heart was food? Maybe she'd found her secret weapon to making Dylan decide he couldn't live without her. She decided baking was plan A in her campaign to win Dylan over. However, I do find that when I bake, I gain weight. That's fine. The boys and I will gain weight with you, Dylan assured her. Caden's too thin anyways. Kelly shook her head. She was about to start putting the hot food on the table when the doorbell rang. I wonder who that is. Dylan frowned as he went to the door. 
she could hear him greeting someone. Kelly used oven mitts to take the roasting pan out of the oven. Here, let me close the oven door for you, a woman said. Thank you. Kelly set the pan on the top of the stove. She was a little surprised that this stranger had come directly into the kitchen. Kelly took off her oven mitts and offered a hand in greeting. Hi, I'm Kelly. Beverly. She shook Kelly's hand. Robert is just talking to Dylan in the foyer. This smells very good. Did you make it yourself? Yes. Kelly smiled a bit uncertainly at Beverly. I got the recipe from Good Housekeeping a few years ago. You can never go wrong with recipes from that magazine. Beverly began helping to transfer the cooked food to serving bowls. Now, if I understand correctly, you have a son. Bentley, Kelly supplied. Excuse me, but exactly how do you know Dylan? Oh, Beverly gave a guilty little laugh. I'm Dylan's mother. How nice to meet you. Kelly felt a little overwhelmed. She hadn't dressed up, done her makeup, or prepared Bentley for a visit from Dylan's parents. However, she did the only thing she could, asking, Would you like to stay for dinner? That would be lovely, Beverly smiled. Thankfully, she had some dinner rolls, the makings for a quick salad, and dessert hadn't been cut yet, so Kelly could stretch the food for her two unexpected guests. Beverly was helpful, but needed instruction as she admitted to having a chef do everything for her. I admire a woman who is able to use her own kitchen. She laughed as she set the table with two new place settings. Personally, the closest I get is discussing the week's menu with Pierre. Kelly smiled uneasily. She didn't really know what to say to that. Fortunately, the boys all showed up like magic since they could smell the food and were hungry as always. Caden and Avery greeted their grandparents with enthusiasm. Bentley was a little more cautious, but polite, which Kelly was very proud and grateful for. She really wanted to make a good first impression. Robert, when Kelly met him, was a dark replica of Dylan. Kelly could see where her husband got his good looks from and his dark blonde coloring from his mother. Dylan made the introductions, and Kelly was treated to a firm handshake. After everyone sat down, they passed the food around. Kelly made it herself, Beverly told her husband. It tastes wonderful, Robert said dutifully. Thank you, Kelly smiled at the compliment. What I would like to know is how my son acquired a wife, and we had to find out the news from the morning tabloids. Robert took a bite of pot roast and raised an eyebrow. Dad, maybe we should wait until after dinner to discuss this, Dylan said evenly. Robert ignored the remark felt a little foolish this morning when my secretary congratulated me on my son's marriage. I assured her it was all an error. After all, I would have thought that we would have been invited to the wedding. There was nothing like a parent to make a person feel guilty like a naughty child, Kelly thought. It was my fault. Kelly, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but it takes two people to get married, Dylan responded wryly. What he said... Robert pointed a fork at Dylan. Dylan, care to explain? It might be best if we waited until after dinner, Robert, Beverly cautioned. The boys are here. All three were listening avidly, Kelly reflected. It was our decision, Dylan said simply. We will have a celebration later where everyone will be invited. Did you at least get a prenup? Robert asked. Dylan didn't answer. Robert looked pointedly at Kelly. I don't think so? Kelly shrugged. It had all happened so fast. She had never had a prenup with Christopher, so she didn't even know what one looked like. Robert put down his utensils and looked at Dylan in disgust. Egad, boy. I knew you were a little different, but I never thought you were stupid. Dylan stood abruptly. My office. Robert watched Dylan walk away. He wiped his lips with his napkin and followed. Beverly smiled. Dessert? Your husband just called your son stupid, and you are asking about dessert? Kelly said in disbelief. I thought it would distract the little ones, Beverly said. Grandma, I don't think any of us are little anymore. Caden gave her a look of reproach. Kelly took a deep breath. Okay, I am going to make this into a learning point. Boys, don't ever call anyone stupid. It's not nice. You wouldn't like it if someone called you stupid. You especially wouldn't like it if your dad or I called you stupid, right? They nodded. 
I might say that I think you could do better, Kelly continued, or that what you did wasn't a good idea. However, I will never call you stupid, and I expect all of you to never do that either. I expect each of you to be a proper gentleman, okay? They nodded again. Does this mean Grandpa isn't a gentleman? Avery asked. It means he wasn't nice, Kelly stated firmly. She didn't look at Beverly as she began collecting plates. I'm sure all of you know it, but I'm going to say it anyways. Your father is not stupid. He's very smart to do the job that he does. He's also a good dad. Mom, I have a question, Bentley said. Sure, Bent, ask away, Kelly responded. I already have a grandpa and grandma. What am I to call these grandparents, he wondered. That's a really good question, Kelly paused. Why don't you call his grandpa and grandma Ramsley, Beverly said softly. Bentley nodded. Okay. Your mother's right, Beverly agreed. It wasn't nice of grandpa to call your father stupid. Nor was it right. Thank you, Kelly was grateful. I made apple pie for dessert. I think we may even have some ice cream. That sounds lovely. Beverly smiled at the peace offering. We'll have to save a piece for Robert and Dylan. They enjoyed the dessert. The boys helped bring their plates to the dishwasher, then ran off to play. Beverly helped with the rest of the cleanup. Do you know, when I first got here, I didn't know how to run a dishwasher? Kelly asked. I had never had one before. I have to confess, I still don't know how to run one, Beverly smiled. Well, I put too much soap in it. Kelly shut the appliance door and set it to run. I had soap suds flowing out of the machine halfway across the kitchen. My goodness. Beverly pressed a hand to her mouth. What did you do? Kelly grinned. I had to mop the floor six times before it stopped being sticky. Then I washed those dishes by hand. Since then, I've had Maria teach me how the fine art of dishwashers. Beverly smiled. I'm sorry we dropped in uninvited. I'm not, Kelly shrugged. I needed to get to know you at some point. You know, you are nothing like they said you would be. Beverly looked a little puzzled. Excuse me? Kelly was feeling a little confused herself. Margaret and Terence Islington. Robert contacted them when we learned about your marrying Dylan, Beverly explained. They said you were a gold-digging hussy and that we had better pry you away from Dylan as quickly as possible. Kelly sighed. They aren't exactly paragons themselves. Beverly, would you like to talk some sense into our son? Robert stood in the kitchen doorway. Excuse me. Beverly gave Kelly a smile before leaving. Kelly watched Robert as he studied her in return. A hundred grand. Pardon? Kelly questioned Robert's abrupt remark. If you will sign a post-nuptial agreement that you will only take a hundred grand upon the dissolution of this marriage, I'll give you a hundred grand right now, Robert stated. No, Kelly said firmly. Three hundred. No. Fine. I will give you half a million, but not a cent more. It's more than fair, Robert said. Most of Dylan's assets are tied up and could take some time to liquidate in a divorce. This would be money in hand if you sign a contract. No, Kelly crossed her arms. I don't want a single cent from you, nor will I take a penny if I divorce your son. Can I get that in writing? Robert asked. Do whatever you want, Kelly brushed past him. I intend to make this marriage work. Seeing Dylan in the foyer with Beverly, she walked up to them and took Dylan's arm. Is everything okay? Dylan asked her. Sure, Kelly smiled sweetly. Your father was reminding me how much he loves you and asked me to look after you. Isn't that right, Robert? Dylan looked a little surprised, and Robert had the grace to look a little ashamed. They all said their goodbyes. That's not what he said, was it? Dylan asked after they had seen his parents off. No, but it was what he meant, Kelly replied. Robert had just been trying to protect Dylan. Maybe he'd gone about it the wrong way, but the sentiment was there. Do you know what Mom said about you? he asked. What? Kelly tilted her head to look at him. She likes you, Dylan smiled. I like her too. Do you know what else? Kelly grinned. What? Robert didn't get any pie, so you get two slices this evening. She led Dylan back to the kitchen. What kind of pie? Dylan asked with definite interest. Apple? Kelly responded. 
I'm starting to think I might be getting the better deal in this marriage, Dylan smiled. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for the next chapter of Reluctant Husband. Also, please share this video for others to find it. This is free for you and would really help me grow my audience with the algorithms. Thank you.